Dividing decimals by whole numbers. Okay, so if you have a decimal, let's say we have 32.4 and we want to divide it by 6. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is bring up the decimal place. Okay, so you're going to place the decimal point in the quotient above the point in 32.4. And now we're ready to do the problem. So you say, does 6 go into 3? Well, no it doesn't. So does 6 go into 32? Yes. How many times? It goes in five times. So then you do 5 times 6, which is 30. And you subtract that from 32 and you get 2. And then you bring down the 4. Now we have, does 6 go into 24? Yes, it does. How many times? Let's say 4. And then you'll see 4 times 6 is 24. And you won't have any remainder so you don't need to go any farther than that. So 6 into 32.4 will get you 5.4. So let's see another example. Let's do 26 divided by 4.5. No, let's not do that. Let's do 13.5 divided by 5. Okay, so the first thing you do is bring up the decimal into the quotient. Then you say, does 5 go into 1? No. Does 5 go into 13? Yes. How many times? 2. And 2 times 5 is 10, so we take away 10 from 13 and you get 3. Then you bring down the 5. Does 5 go into 35? Well, yes it does. How many times? 7. So 7 times 5 is 35. And that gets you 0. So your answer here is 2.7. So 13.5 divided by 5 is 2.7. Sometimes you'll have to write additional zeros in your problem. Um, for instance, oh here, let's start with the fresh screen. Okay, so for instance, you have 14 divided by 8. Now does 8 go into 1? No. Does 8 go into 14? Yes, it goes in one time. So 14 minus 8 gives you 6. Okay, now at this point we have to add a decimal and then bring it up to the quotient. And then you're going to add a 0 here and bring it down. Okay, did you catch that? So you're going to need to add a decimal and bring it up to the quotient and then add a zero and bring it down here so that makes 60 and then does 8 go into 60? Well I believe it does. Um, how many times? Let's try 7. 7 times 8 will give you 56 and 60 minus 56 is 4. Okay, now we're going to have to add another 0. Bring that one down. Does 8 go into 40? Yes. How many times? 5. And 5 times 8 is 40. 
and we're done. So 14 divided by 8 gives you 1.75. And if you look at it, that kind of makes sense, right? Because 8 goes into 14 at least once and and about three quarters. So you know that you put the decimal in the right spot. That should make sense to you. Okay, sometimes you need to use a zero as a placeholder when you're doing one of these problems. So for example, let's say we have 7 divided by 23. Okay, does 23 go into 7? No, it doesn't. So we have to add a decimal and bring that up to the quotient. Then you're going to add a zero here. Does 23 go into 70? Well, yes it does. It goes in three times. Then you do 3 times 3, which is 9, and 3 times 2, which is 6. And 70 minus 69 is 1. Then you add a zero here and bring it down. Okay, now here is where you're going to need a zero as a placeholder because 23 does not go into 10. So you have to put zero here and then add another zero and bring it down. Now 23 does go into 100 four times and that'll give you 4 times 3 which is 12 and 4 times 2 which is 8 plus 1 which is 9. So you have 100 minus 92 which is 8. Then you add another 0. Bring that one down. And does 23 go into 80? Well, yes it does. How many times? Well, it goes in 3 times. Then you do 3 times 3, which is 9. And 3 times 2, which is 6. And 80 minus 69 is 11. I'm running out of room here. And you can keep going. Um, yeah, I usually stop when, when the quotient reaches the 10,000th place. So this is good enough. Okay, so that's how you divide a decimal by a whole number.